Um, last time we, uh, I think we, we wrote the, the general solution of the Maxwell equation. Right, the, uh, in terms of the vector and uh, scalar potentials. And uh, so it's uh, integral over the volume. So this big R is the distance between uh, the, the observation points and the point within the volume where the charges and the current are located. So it looks just like uh, the usual solution for the static problem. But you have to remember that uh, everything is done at the retarded time meaning that T prime is not equal to T, T prime here is not equal to the time T, but is the retarded one. So it's T minus the time it takes for the signal to reach the observer because everything propagates with the finite velocity. In fact, the velocity of light. And we have a completely similar result for the uh, uh, s scalar potential. Uh, and the only difference is that uh, you integrate over the charge density. Again, in the volume uh, R, so if this is the, the, the volume R, Here's the distance r, here's the observation point t, and again at the retarded time, right? So in a way we, we, we are done because uh, we wrote the Maxwell equations. Now we have solved them, so everything is just a matter of, 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 of writing this. But uh, you see that uh, uh, if this distribution is complicated, you may have some problem in doing the integrals. And uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, study some, uh, uh, some examples, right? Uh, and so I think uh, uh, this is where I stop on Friday, right? Or, yes. And so the next thing I want to do is, okay, so this is the general solution. Now let's see some, uh, uh, I don't know how to call it, application, an application. So let's start with the simplest. Uh, you see, this is the, just an arbitrary current and arbitrary charge density. So you understand that the simplest case would be what? Uh, uh, well, I guess uh, one of the simplest uh, cases would be if, if we take a single charge, right? Let's take uh, the, the case of a, of a single charge. Q. And uh, because we want the simplest case, uh, I mean, you understand this, this could be a single charge, but moving arbitrarily, accelerating, doing whatever the charge wants to do. But uh, let's just stick to, to the simplest case that uh, the charge just moves with constant speed. As, you, as we will see, in order to have radiation, you need the charge or the, of the charge distribution to accelerate. So this is sort of the simplest because then you don't have radiation from this system. And, uh, and we want to find the, uh, the fields in this uh, simple case. So we have a single, so we, here is our observation point, this R at time t, and, uh, uh, and uh, we have to be careful because uh, 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 you see R, so the position uh, of this point here, uh, let's say is R, and this is R prime, and, and here's the same charge. So this is the point P at the time T, the charge is here, but at the time T prime, at the time T prime, the charge is, is back here, okay? So this uh, R, let's see. 
So this is the present position. Actually, R prime here. So you see all the time you have to worry that uh, 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 you are computing the, the field here is not the field produced by the charge uh, at the time t because the charge at the time t is here. But uh, the field here is, is the one that was produced by the charge at the time t, t prime that is a little bit uh, before. Because this, this moves and then the, the field propagates and when this is here then you are hit by the field here. So all the time you have to worry about this retardation. That's what makes the problem uh, uh, not equal to the uh, electrostatic or magnetostatic problem, okay? Where you have uh, just a single sign. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see uh, how these, uh, these uh, uh, integrals uh, are done in this uh, simple case. Now you see that because we have just a charge, right? <coughs> yes. A, a is just, uh, it, it, it's, it's the time from here to here, so I call it R prime. Uh, because I call R this, so this is R prime. But uh, because before, th this is just too arbitrary. If you start here, this will be R and that will be R prime. Then this will be R minus R prime. I mean, if you prefer, you can call it but then you have to measure from uh, some, uh, if because I started from here measuring position, then that is just at R prime. Yes? I, if I start here, I call this R, and this is R prime, then this distance is R minus R prime. So you see, then I just, just call it the uh, big R if you want. <coughs> So for a single charge, right, I know how to write the, the current uh, and in particular the, the charge density, but you see the problem is that, uh, so th if, the, if you didn't have this retardation problem, then the, the, the infinitesimal charge produced by a, a, an infinitesimal volume of, uh, would be just, uh, 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 okay, it would be just uh, rho T, R prime, D3 R prime, right? But this is not true, right? Because uh, I, the DQ producing the field is not just the DQ. I have to worry about the retardation because you see, as I, uh, let's take the, <coughs> sorry, assume that uh, this charge uh, density is uh, in a small volume that is a cube, just uh, for, to make it simple, right? And this, this charge is moving, okay? So you see, as you take this integral, so to speak, uh, uh, the charge has moved a little bit. So it's not any longer there. So you have to keep track of this as you do the integral because of this retardation. So you see, actually, uh, uh, the, uh, this, the effective charge contributed, the infinitesimal charge contributing at the point P at the time uh, uh, T prime that is the retarded time, is not just this. You have to subtract the amount of charge that either has moved away or it has moved in while you were doing the integral. So let, let's assume that it's moving this way. So it's moving out from the original. So I subtract, this is the, 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 the charge density minus this factor that I'm going to write here. Uh, and I, I'm going to explain it in a second. <coughs> Okay. Why do I have this correction factor? You see, because as I said, say, assume that uh, you have your charge and it moves uh, something like this, the distance, uh, let's call it B. So let, let's assume a one dimensional problem. And uh, it, it was a cube, so it started out with uh, this four sides equal to A. So in the time at T prime, it moves uh, by a distance B. And how much is this change in the volume? Well, you see that B is equal to A plus V, the velocity of this, the delta T, that is the time through which you are integrating. And how big is this delta T? The delta T is exactly this uh, R 
minus r prime divided by the, uh, the, the velocity uh, of light. So you see when you rewrite this, you get this extra factor. So it's like a, 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 in, in relativity, this comes about because of, a, a, it's, a, it's like a, a Lorentz contraction. But uh, I mean, you, you can understand it from, from this uh, argument. So it's not true that uh, you just plug in uh, the, uh, the value of this charge here. You also have to take into account that, so, so to speak, the volume is, uh, is contracting because of this retardation. So you have two effects. Uh, and therefore, so let me write this. Uh, I can collect now the two, right? Uh, and it's, uh, uh, as I said, it's 1 minus this factor, r minus r. Uh, dot, sorry, here I forgot the V that I had uh, divided by the length uh, C. And this is D3 R. Okay. So now I can, uh, uh, I can uh, uh, write the solution. for the scalar potential, because you see now I, the scalar potential is just the, the integral of this small charge over the volume. So I get the potential in R is going to be uh, minus or uh, depend, uh, well, 4 pi epsilon. What? The, this, uh, this, this, this is dq, right? So I have to do the dq, but the dq is given there, divide by this distance. The distance is what it is, this big r that is minus. Right? So if I plug in this, I get, the, uh, you see, the dq, it becomes just the total charge, right? Because it's this integral here. So I have the charge plus minus, depending on the sign of the charge. Then I have this overall factor. So this would be just uh, what? It would be just uh, the, the potential of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the Coulomb force, right? But you have this extra factor that I write in this form. You see, if I call, uh, uh, so let me call, you see, this is, let, let me call V this quantity here that is the component of the velocity the component of the velocity along the distance uh, here. So then I can just write 1 minus V divided by C. And of course, it's at the retarded time. So there are two effects. It's true, it's like the Coulomb potential, but computed at the retarded time. And because of this, I also have this extra correction factor, sort of. Similarly, I can write the, I, I can do the same for the vector potential, obviously. And I get uh, essentially the same, but uh, with the velocity here, because this is the, the current produced by a point charge. So it's the same thing, but uh, So these are, they, they have a name, Leonard and Wecker potentials. This, this was a, a Frenchman and a German, Leonard vector potentials. So they are the potential of a point charge moving with constant speed. So that's a, a, a nice, and uh, so those are, they are kind of interesting, I mean, and just to make, make them, uh, ah, 
guess I, I still need this. Um, Um, well, anyway, it, it's a homework to rewrite them, so. Well, they, they are in the book, no, don't worry. And, and so, in fact, this is the, the, the exercise that uh, uh, you should try and do by Monday. So, so okay, derive the, derive the, the well, uh, we already did, so, right? But uh, uh, given the, uh, so the exercise, I guess, is uh, given the uh, linear, ve ve linear vehicle potentials, uh, compute the, uh, derive the, uh, the field intensity that is uh, E and, and B. Hmm? And, and, and discuss the result. Discuss means that uh, uh, you should notice how they, they are, the way they are. Okay. Uh, from from the, the potentials. So rederive the linear vector potentials. Then when, when you know the potential, you know how to get the E and B field. Then uh, look, uh, well, I, essentially I want the, the angular distribution of these fields. How, they, how do they look? You will see, it's interesting. Uh, so the, the next step uh, is, uh, so here essentially you, you have a, a a, a, a point particles moving with this velocity, and, and you can compute the potential. So the next uh, interesting example on which we can discuss these general solutions is uh, uh, if you have a, 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 a localized uh, source, J and rho, oscillating, right? Because that uh, is uh, an accelerating system, so uh, we, will start, we, we start to see the most interesting uh, features of, of these solutions that uh, they contain radiation. Okay? You see what we are doing here. We, 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 we found the general solution. Of course, uh, for a static uh, uh, problem, then uh, it, it boils down to what we have already done in electrostatic and uh, magnetostatic. Uh, and uh, then uh, if you allow some uh, uh, movement uh, but uh, we know accelerations, then uh, we, we have some class of solutions, the simplest of which is this linear weaker potential. But what we, is really interesting is to see what happens when, when you have your source that is really changing in time, okay? So that could be quite complicated, but uh, essentially uh, it's enough to study the case in which you have a, a, an oscillating uh, charge or an oscillating charge distribution. And because it's oscillating, it, it has some acceleration. And what we see here is that uh, there is going to be some components of these fields that are, uh, 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 they are not dumped very fast with the distance. They go down like one over R, and that's what we call radiation, okay? So if you have an oscillating or accelerating charge distribution, uh, what you discover uh, is that you have radiation you have a, a, a field that uh, is felt very far away uh, and it has certain characteristics. So let's, let's study this case. W what I mean by an oscillating source? I mean that uh, I pick this, this uh, charge 
density and current density to be of the form you have some distribution and then the time variation of this distribution is like this. Uh, I put uh, a time variation. Uh, when, when you see this, it's always the real part of this, right? Remember the harmonic oscillator. And similarly, for your, uh, uh, you have some uh, distribution of charges, uh, of currents, uh, and they, uh, the time variation is very simple. It's just a, a, a cosine of omega t. But uh, it's easier to write it as an exponential and then uh, consider the, the, real, the real part. And now I want to study uh, under this uh, uh, assumption. L let's just study. It's enough to study. Uh, the vector potential then we from that we we derive uh, we derive the uh, because uh, uh, maybe just an aside here <coughs> if you have this kind of uh, uh, time variation that is just oscillating that means that also e and b essentially will be oscillating function right but then you see that the uh, 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 the Maxwell equation sort of simplify because, for instance, the curve of E, right, that is, uh, then it has here a, a time derivative uh, uh, of, uh, of, the, of B, but because uh, the time derivatives only see the oscillating part, you see that this is going to be just uh, minus I omega, the time derivative uh, uh, of, of B with the C or, or not, depending on. Uh, let's not put it the C. Uh, then we are using the international uh, uh, system. And similarly, uh, the other uh, equation that I write with H, uh, it has the, the other sign. So it's like this. OK. So you see that, uh, 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 well, uh, if you put back uh, the units, uh, you see you can always get the, the E field from the B field, right? Uh, right. Uh, in particular, uh, if you look at here, uh, 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 let's, so I, uh, this is the correct equation. But now uh, let's assume that we are in, in the vacuum, in the vacuum. So you see that uh, uh, you get, uh, uh, so the H, uh, it has the mu. <sighs> so here you can replace E, right? if you put uh, the epsilon naught. And here you can replace the B if you put the, the mu naught. So we are, so that means that E is equal, you, you take it on the other side to uh, I, uh, C, uh, K, epsilon naught, curl of H. Or, because C is always uh, 1 over the square root of epsilon naught mu naught, this is uh, I over K, uh, the square root of epsilon naught mu naught, the curl of H. OK, so I mean, what I want, sometimes this is called the, 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 the impedance of, of the system, because uh, with the analogy of, of the vacuum with the analogy of what you have in the circuit. But uh, the point, anyway, is that uh, if you know the, 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 the magnetic field, then uh, you can find the electric field for, for these fields that are oscillating in time. So that's why it's enough to study the vector potential. So let's study the vector potential. 
So I have this solution. Let me write it uh, uh, more explicitly. Uh, and to do that, uh, I, I, I introduce. Ah, this? What was? No, no, but this I'm just saying in the vacuum. We, I, I'm, I'm, I'm outside these uh, charges. So I'm, I'm going to compute the, this potential at the distance r outside all sources, OK? And they are, they are related by the Maxwell equations in the vacuum. In fact, you see here I use epsilon and mu naught. I'm, I'm in the vacuum, OK? Is this clear? I mean, this is, this is, you have J if you are inside the charge and current distribution. But once you are outside, you are in the vacuum. So you can use the um, Maxwell equation for, for, for that. So uh, to make this explicit, I should uh, reintroduce the delta function. Remember that this retardation was essentially the integral over dt prime uh, of a delta function. So let me write that back. That means uh, I have uh, uh, j r prime uh, t prime r minus r prime. And then uh, I had this t prime plus r minus r prime divided by c minus t. That was the, the retardation. So, But now j, I, I'm assuming the j is in this form, right? So you can replace here the j I wrote there. So j r e to the uh, minus i omega t. So you see that in this case, uh, when, when you do the delta function, is you, you replace, again, t with this uh, retarded time, but in this form. So in this case, this integral is, uh, is in the form uh, uh, d3r prime. You have your jr prime. And then uh, you have this exponential that has been shifted. So by, uh, I write it like this. I introduce k. So let's introduce k that is omega divided by uh, c. So you have k r minus r prime minus i omega t. And then uh, it's sitting on this 1 over r uh, factor. Okay. And then uh, you know that h is just uh, uh, 1 over mu naught, uh, the curl of this quantity. So uh, this is a. Then when I have a, I can compute h uh, through this uh, usual uh, thing. So OK. So clearly now, I, uh, uh, to, to proceed, I have to say something about uh, this uh, charge uh, density. And uh, essentially, what you do is uh, you have to assume something about uh, the distance from this distribution of charges. Usually, this is done by defining uh, three regions, right? Because say here is where you have all these charges and currents, OK? And, uh, uh, so this, this source is going to have some characteristic uh, volume that you can characterize with some uh, diameter. Let's call it D. This is the D, OK? And you are at a certain distance from this uh, source. So this is the source. And, and you are here at the distance R, OK? And then uh, the other, you see, you have D and R. So uh, if you are very close to D, 
r is going to be not much bigger than d, and if you are far away, then d is much smaller than r. But in the problem, because you have an oscillating source, there is another scale that is relevant, that is the, the wavelengths of this uh, oscillation, right? So you can introduce uh, another scale, lambda, uh, if you call uh, lambda, uh, um, uh, so you have omega that is the characteristic oscillation uh, frequency, so you can call 2 pi c over omega. So this is the characteristic length of this oscillation, okay? So you have three parameters, in, in, uh, and usually uh, if you go and, and read your book, uh, uh, you will see that uh, you have a near, uh, also called static, uh, you see why in a second, zone. Okay, so this is essentially is the, the zone where uh, uh, R is always, we are always very far away from D, okay. But, uh, 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 so, D is much smaller than R, so you are sufficiently far away from D to not have to worry too much about the, the to be inside that charge distribution. But also, uh, you are, uh, 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 R is much smaller than the characteristic uh, uh, lengths, uh, wavelengths of this oscillation, okay? So that, I don't know, th this is, so this is, this is lambda. So this, this is a regime in which uh, you see lambda is very, very big, okay? And then you understand why it is essentially the static zone, because essentially this thing does not oscillate. I mean, you are, it's like if you have a, a wave coming, but the wavelength is much bigger than, uh, you are closer to the source than the first uh, wave, okay? So for you, essentially, uh, a static is not oscillating because you don't see this oscillation. You, you have to, it's a, okay, it's clear. Then uh, uh, you, you may have an intermediate zone, induction is called, Well, you understand, uh, this is still true, but now lambda, the wavelengths, uh, the, the, and the R, is co they are comparable. So essentially, is, uh, you, you see that it's a wave, but, uh, and it's comparable to your distance. So it, it's like this one. So before it was like, hmm? okay. A and finally, uh, obviously, you have a far zone that is called the radiation zone, that actually is the, the most interesting, at least for me, where D is, uh, so now uh, you have that uh, D is, uh, 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 is much smaller than, uh, than the, the, the wavelengths, and the wavelengths is much smaller than uh, R, okay? So now it's like this. So let's discuss briefly these two. I mean, let's, uh, we, we skip the intermediate zone because uh, it's more complicated. But the other two are, uh, uh, they can be discussed uh, in some detail. So let's start with the near zone. So now I discuss uh, this uh, vector potential in the assumption that I'm in the near zone. This obviously implies some simplification on the, uh, uh, on the function that I have to integrate it, and so I can get some sort of, uh, of so because you see, if we are in the near zone, that means that this KR term uh, uh, can, is, is, very, is very small, right? It can be neglected because R is much smaller than the wavelengths, right? So that means, you see, the wavelengths uh, uh, is here, that uh, K, that is omega over C, K is omega. That means that the K, uh, K uh, R is much smaller than one. That means I can essentially, this is, is one, right? Because the exponential of zero is, is one. 
okay? So essentially I can write uh, that, that the integral in the approximation in which uh, this is, is close to one, in fact, it goes to one. But then uh, that integral uh, simplify very much, it simplify very much because uh, the potential now R of t is mu naught divided by four pi. Then you see uh, this I, I, I neglect. So, okay, I have this oscillating part that I can put even outside the integral, right? Because there is no, uh, yes. La radiation, c'est où? This. Ra radiation, yeah. Ah, you just want a radi. Yeah. Radiation. Okay. We are good. Uh, so you see, then I, I have this term here that is sort of trivial. It's just uh, following in the oscillation the, the source. Then this is not there, but then I have left exactly the same uh, integral that we had uh, a few weeks ago when we were doing uh, uh, magnetostatics. And in fact, I can do the same expansion, right? So I have e to the minus omega t that is still there. But uh, so ma maybe let, let me. I have this, this term here, but then uh, I can expand uh, this in the usual way, right? Because it's one over r minus r uh, uh, vector prime. Uh, so I have, uh, uh, I can expand it in, in, uh, in spherical harmonics. You remember that or? So I, I go back to, to what we did uh, a few weeks ago <laughs> and I have my, uh, uh, expansion in uh, 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 spherical harmonics. So I have a part that depends on the position of R. So that goes outside the, the integral. And then I have the part, so I have E to the, and then I have the other spherical harmonics that is the one that depends on uh, on the theta prime and phi prime, so the coordinates inside the volume over which I'm integrating. And there I have also the, I have my, the, this chart distribution, then R L prime, Y L M uh, dot of theta prime, phi prime, and here I have my uh, D3 R prime. So for this reason, you see this near zone is called the quasi static because if you forget about this, this is exactly what we would have written two weeks ago doing the magnetostatic problem. So the near zone, essentially you, you see what you would have seen if the uh, source had not really oscillated because you, you have the, the exactly the same solution and the only difference is that it's modulated in time by this cosine simply because it's moved, but it's, it's moving slowly with respect to you, so. So it's not really that interesting. And in fact, we can move on to, to the next, that is uh, the far zone, the far zone So the far zone means that uh, 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 is this one, uh, and now you can expand this. Uh, so essentially, you can expand this this distance, right? This this is a far zone. So the first effect is that uh, uh, this is essentially r minus n dot r prime, where n is a unit vector in the direction of r. So it's r divided by r. So in the, under this approximation, my potential now for the far zone is this mu naught over four pi. Then you see that uh, here, I can use this uh, approximation, right? So I have uh, a 
e to the i k r that I can pull out from the integral, e to the i k r, then I have minus i omega t that I can always pull out from the integral because it does not uh, depend, uh, okay? So that looks like a wave. And then uh, downstairs I can pull out this r, so r goes outside, and I'm left uh, with the integral over the charge uh, current distribution uh, in R prime, right? Uh, uh, and uh, I have a leftover here in this exponential because you see I have R, but I also have this uh, unit vector dot R prime that uh, comes like minus I K N dot R prime, D3 R prime. So I don't know if you, re this, this looks like a, an outgoing spherical wave, right? Do you recognize that as a spherical wave? You see, it's a, it goes like one over r, and then it has an exponential uh, i k r. So that's a, a, it's a spherical wave. Uh, and then there is this factor that depends on the uh, precise distribution of these currents, okay? In fact, you can further simplify this because I can use the, the Taylor expansion for this exponential, right? I, can, the, I know that the e to the x is equal to the sum from n equal to zero to infinity of what? Yes. So uh, uh, maybe let's write it a little better. I pull out, so I, I replace the exponential by the sum in the Taylor expansion. You see the Taylor expansion, now I erase it, but uh, of, uh, 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 I have minus i k to the n, n factorial, and then I have the parts that depend on uh, r prime, so I have, uh, the, my current is still there, and here I have all these powers of r prime that were in the exponential to, to the n. Do you agree? And why I'm doing that? Because you see here, they, they, they look nice, because I can then look at the f few terms in this expansion, and I will re re get, get back something that looks like a dipole, a quadrupole. So I'm back to my, I, I, I hope our old expansion uh, in terms of multiples. Okay, so I'm going to have a radiation field depending on some multiple expansion here, and I can study, for instance, the lowest order that is the dipole. That is what we are going to do in a second. If if you uh, uh, if you are happy up to this point, if you are, uh, I guess. Well, I need some blackboard, so let me erase this. <coughs> so, uh, for instance, uh, what if I take just the uh, just the first term in this expansion? Right? Uh, if I take the first term, uh, I, I don't have this factor. I mean, essentially, I just take the one in this uh, expansion. So I have uh, uh, A uh, of uh, uh, R and T that is equal to what? Mu naught 4 pi. I have this spherical wave. But then I, 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 I don't have anything else. I just have this integral over j r prime d3 r prime, right? So this is the leading term in a way, is the, the first term in this expansion. And really, we will stick essentially to this one. But you understand, you can go on and you will produce other terms.
And uh, now, as usual, we need to do some, uh, we have to massage this term in such a way to write something that we recognize. And uh, you see that uh, uh, if I do, I, I can do this integral by parts. That's a, a usual trick, right? Because there is this big garbage uh, bin that we call the infinity, right? <laughs> so if we do something by parts, whatever is an infinity, we throw away because we assume that everything decays fast enough not to worry much about the infinity, even though here we are sort of borderline because with all this radiation going in and out, it's not obvious that we can neglect uh, but certainly here we can neglect in this integral because we, we are talking about a source that is localized, okay? So let, let's do it by part. So by part, I, I throw away whatever, uh, I don't have any charges or currents at infinity, so I can throw that away, and I'm left with the minus R prime. Then I have to take the derivative of this, but the derivative of this is really a gradient, right, in this language. It's a gradient on this R prime, so I guess uh, uh, it's not a gradient, it's a, it's a divergence over the volume R prime, okay? So I've done this by parts. And this is nice because uh, 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 looks like a, an electric dipole moment, right? Because this uh, is equal to you see you, you can pull back this in, so this is minus omega, the integral of R prime, right? Uh, this this is is what? You know you have this uh, yeah the charge uh, conservation okay yes or no Yes or no? It's, it's a simple question, no? <laughs> I, you, you, you by parts and then you use the charge conservation. This, uh, this, this oscillates in time, so the time derivative is this again, so you get this omega. So the old thing, so this was the integral, so that means the old potential can be written in a very, so I collect this there, so I get minus I mu naught omega divided by 4 pi. Then this, we, we already have a nice name for this, is the dipole, uh, is the electric dipole moment, right? Uh, so essentially it's P, and then I have this spherical way, KR minus I omega T divided by R. You see, every time you get uh, an omega here, you can always think that, because this P itself, right, is the, uh, right, it, it's, you see, it's like a, a time derivative of P. So in a way, this is like uh, proportional to the time derivative, one time derivative of, of P. That's a useful way, uh, well, in a second, uh, we, we, we will see why. So now, so, okay, so that's uh, the, the, the solution for, well, it's, it's not the full solution, obviously. We, we have taken the, the lowest order on this expansion, and we are in the far zone. So it's, the simpli it's, a, it's a special case of a special case. Uh, 
you mean the omega, did I, it's, uh, no, it's my, th this is equal to minus one. Huh? Okay. It depends if you take it. I mean, it's not very important, I mean, this sign. So let's not sweat about it. Uh, so now I can compute the, uh, the, the, uh, the radiation. Uh, I can compute H and E, the field strengths, the fields in the radiation, so in the far radiation zone having the potential, now I can compute this. And you see it's very simple because I just have to, to uh, so H is, uh, is uh, one over mu zero, the curl of A, where A is given by that. So if you, uh, so you have to take the curl uh, so let me write this result. So k, k is omega divided by c. So this is omega square divided by c. Then n is, the, is this versor, is a unit vector pointing in, uh, at the observation point cross p, e k r minus omega t divided by r. Actually, this can be, <coughs> <coughs> well, just a second. And then E, because of what I wrote there uh, before, is just uh, uh, H cross N with this factor mu naught epsilon naught, right? This imped impedance. So you see you have a, a omega square here. So that means it, it, this is proportional to the second derivative of this, uh, of this uh, P essentially. So this is, the field is proportional to the acceleration of your oscillating charge as it should be. As before, we saw if there is no acceleration, it's moving with constant velocity, you don't have this radiation field. So that's important. If you have a, an accelerating charge, then you have a radiation fit. Otherwise, you do not. And the E field is just uh, this combination, so it, it goes the same way. Now, I don't have the energy to do the same for the near zone, but you understand that is not very much different. Again, here you can take the leading term, the leading term in this expansion, okay, and uh, 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 and do the same computation, but uh, you are going to discuss, you see this was exactly, we said this is a set, the same solution that we had in the static limit except for this overall oscillation. So it's not surprised that you are going to uh, uh, have a, a magnetic field and electric field that are exactly the same as the static solutions, right, for the dipole, except for this overall phase that is the cosine of omega t. So in the near zone, you can write the solution or you can rederive if you, if you want. So in the near zone, it's just like uh, it was before. So uh, 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 the H field is going to be I omega for pi and cross P. But you see, one over r square e i omega t. 
And E, you can get it from a similar formula, is going to be the, the electric field for, the, uh, for, a dipole, uh, for a dipole that you remember. But you see, the two important thing is that uh, uh, first, it goes like 1 over R squared. So it's a field that uh, goes down much faster than the radiation field that is characterized by the 1 over R behavior. And second, it has only one omega, so it goes like uh, essentially a first derivative. So it's something that you have even if uh, you don't have an acceleration. So essentially it's like a, a slowly moving dipole, say with constant speed, is going to have this, but not this one. Okay. How much power is given off by this radiation? That's the, the next question, I guess. Uh, well, that's easy to estimate because all you need is your uh, pointing vector. So uh, for a given solid angle, the omega, if you if you, you have to do some uh, time averaging time averaging of your power and it's given so you, you have to take the real part because you have this uh, oscillating thing and this is given by r square the component n that is always the one pointing toward the observer and then the pointing vector so e cross h well because h here is complex you should take uh, H conjugate and then take the real part. So that gives you the power uh, when you average, right? This comes from the integral and then. Uh, uh. So if you plug in, you see, then, uh, oh, damn, I, well, uh, oh, no, it's, it's here. No, sorry, uh, I, this, the radiation one, I, you can plug them in, right? Uh, you have uh, H and E, they are given by this. So I've done this computation, I get uh, k to the fourth, 32 pi square. Then you get this mu, square root of mu naught, epsilon naught from the, from the E. And then inside, you see you, you have this uh, uh, n uh, cross p uh, cross n square. Now, if you introduce, now you can introduce the, uh, you have a solid angle, uh, so you, 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 you define the sine of theta to be uh, one of your coordinates. So th then you can do this uh, vector product, right? Uh, and you see you have the uh, c square k to the fourth, 32 pi square, this square root. And now this, this thing is just the, 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 the length of your dipole square, right? Then you have this. Uh, so if n, the angle between n and p is, the, is, is theta, this is just the sine square of theta, like this, right? And now you can do the integral over the, so the total is just this integral, so Thirty-two, you, you get this factor from the angular integral. You you kill one pi, and then just mu naught epsilon naught. So the total power emitted by an oscillating charge at the leading order in the expansion. So when you only retain the dipole term, is uh, the square of the of the dipole, right? And uh, you see it goes like the fourth power of the frequency. That's a famous uh, uh, term that we will discuss uh, uh, in a second, or maybe a little longer. OK. So if, if you have something uh, oscillating, it emits uh, radiation. So that's uh, uh, energy that is flowing away, OK? And uh, so it, 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 it loses energy or it emitting energy 
proportional to the fourth power of the of the frequency, right? That is like the fourth power of one over the wavelengths. So that means that uh, if you have light, for instance, uh, e exciting atoms in the atmosphere, right? You have so these atoms start emitting with this. Uh, the atoms are a little bit like uh, uh, sources uh, described by uh, 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 an harmonic oscillator oscillating, and they emit proportionally to the fourth power of their frequency. So that means they they emit much more. Uh, uh, Right uh, at higher, f they emit more at the higher frequencies than uh, 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 lower frequencies. That, for instance, is the reason why uh, the sky is blue, right? Because blue, right, is a higher frequencies than red, uh, and you have this stuff uh, oscillating, and it emits much more in the blue than in the red. So when you look at the sky, the atoms there, they are emitting more in the blue than in the red because of this formula. So that formula is called the, I mean, this fact that it goes like the fourth power of omega or one over lambda to the fourth uh, is the law of the blue sky. Of course, this is also the reason why the sun is red just before uh, a sunset because the light coming from the sun get uh, 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 get uh, uh, goes uh, to excite these atoms so the blue light is uh, is diffused much more than the red one so the light that was originally white from the sun uh, the blue component get depleted and you are left with the red part okay so that I guess uh, it doesn't have a name but uh, it explains why the sun is red at the sunset and this explains why the sky is blue so you see, very important application <laughs> of this computation. Uh, if you ever wonder why the sky is, most people just know it's blue. <laughs> it, like it could be green. Why? Why it's not green? Well, <coughs> okay. So now this is. Uh, uh, The mass. Yes. There is not. There is no mass here. They are just massless fields. Yeah. No. But that's okay. No. Uh, thi this is just pure electromagnetic field. So there are no masses. Then maybe I confuse you a little bit because I start talking about these atoms in the atmosphere. But there, there is a different system, really, because there you, you have to think of the atoms as a harmonic oscillators, right? And then they go back and forth like this. Okay, so there you have the mass. But the mass has to do with the motion of this atom, but not with the, with the radiation. So here we are just assuming that uh, this is moving with this, uh, no, the, you remember the current, well, I don't have it any longer, but the current was uh, just uh, the static part and then oscillating like this. So I guess this is just like this. Actually, this is just a charge. And if this charge is moving like this, this is the electromagnetic field that is coming out. So there is no mass here. You need the mass if you want to know how this moves, right? But that's a different problem. There, you, you have to use the Lorentz force. Then you write the Lorentz force of the motion of this because of the presence of some electric and magnetic field. Actually, that's a complicated problem because you understand. We, we are not going to discuss that, but uh, since we are talking, because once you have the particle moving, and then uh, we have solved the problem of how this particle moves because of external electric and magnetic fields, right? The first class. Now you see this particle is moving, and if it is accelerating, then it is irradiating, right? You have radiation. 
and you see it's losing energy. So that means that uh, the Lorentz force is not correct any longer because you have a sort of a reaction on the particle because the energy of the particle is changing because it's radiating uh, uh, electromagnetic energy. So in principle here you should study the back reaction of this on the particle and you understand that becomes uh, a complicated equation that however has, has been discussed. Uh, uh, is, 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 if you look at uh, the Jackson, the, there is a chapter where this is discussed. You see, this goes back the, to the problem the, the, of the electrons. Uh, uh, where are we are of the, so say you have the atoms, uh, and then you want to make this uh, uh, a, a classical system. So you have a proton and an electron. Now they are attracted. So the uh, electron is bound to be in some orbit, uh, like a, a planet around the sun. And this maybe was the idea that people had. But uh, the electron is going around, very nice. But because of this, this guy is going around, right? So you know that, uh, I hope, after all, all I've taught you in classical mechanics, that uh, an atom going around, an electron going around is accelerating, right? And so it's accelerating, so it's emitting radiation, so it's losing energy. So the idea is that this guy is going around, losing energy, and so eventually falling on the proton. So this was the original argument against the classical atoms, because they say uh, they cannot last, because the electrons uh, radiate, and then they eventually fall. This is not completely correct, however. Is one of those things you know that people repeat and eventually they write in the books. But uh, actually, if you have more electrons, uh, you, you see it, it cannot be completely right because you know that if you have a wire, that is not radiating. If you take a wire, right like this, there is no radiation. Right? The electrons are going around. So how come? <laughs> is the fact is that if you have more than one electron you can have interference among the various electrons, and the radiation actually can be almost completely destroyed. That's the reason why if you have a symmetric thing, like if you have a charged sphere, and then it's rotating, it's not radiating. So a single electron is radiating. But if you have many electrons distributed in a uniform way, you understand there cannot be any radiation be simply because of the symmetry of the system. So if you take a charged, uniformly charged sphere, and you rotate it, that is not radiating. So the idea really should be that the atom, the classical atom, should be some form of uniformly distributed set of electrons. And that you can always arrange in such a way that you reduce the uh, radiation. I think I even have a, an exercise or something like this, uh, something similar. But that's sort of, a, I mean, it, it just uh, uh, just to say that the usual argument that you find in the books is not completely correct. I mean, that uh, because of this, the classical atoms, uh, I mean, they were not stupid at the time. They knew about this, so they knew how to make this stable. Uh, but of course, the, the reason why the classical atom is not correct is, is the experiments. Uh, I mean, they, it, they do not radiate following this law, because you know that they radiate in a, in a, in a quantized way, right? They do not radiate like this. This is a continuum spectrum of radiation. Why, if you have an atom, it's not radiating like this. So that's the reason why you need to quantize. Not, not because uh, it falls on the, this is, this is kind of uh, naive. But OK, if you have a single electron, then this is true. OK, I don't know if I answer you or I completely confuse everybody at this point. So now that we are happily confused, we can move to a, 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 a so this is the, the dipole radiation, right? So I guess uh, uh, I want to uh, or maybe I give you this as an exercise. Yeah, I, 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 I've been a little slow, but OK, well, let, let's start.
so I guess uh, what I wanted to do, well, uh, originally I thought maybe as an exercise, but oh, sorry, this is the general derivation of this dipole thing. But you may wonder, okay, I, I didn't understand a thing. Maybe that's your feeling now. I mean, he, he has been just expanding and doing. So you just blacked out. And uh, because you are clever, you may say, well, okay, I don't care about this uh, derivation. Uh, 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 he, he said that it's a dipole, so I can take a dipole that, uh, let, let me take this uh, plus here and minus here, okay, something. So this is a dipole, right? And uh, I can write this, uh, the, the potential for, for this dipole, right? And I think this is what uh, is done in the in the other book. So uh, uh, so I don't know. Should we? Is this a homework or should we? So you see, then I, I, I go R here, I sit here, and I look this, uh, uh, at this problem that uh, I have my, my uh, my dipole, and I study the field of this dipole. And I should recover the same result that I had before. OK? So it's a sort of a double check. Uh, this was the way that uh, This was the way that uh, this was derived by Hertz. So I guess this system of a simple dipole radiation is called uh, the Hertz uh, oscillator or something. So the idea is what? I take again my potentials that I already derive uh, and uh, uh, so this uh, linear weaker potentials. No, I'm a little uncertain whether to to dig into this or do you want to try and do it as a homework uh, or I see that you are not enthusiastic. Okay, so the, uh, So we know that the potential here is uh, like this. It's the one we started with and has to be computed at a retarded time. Okay? And similarly for A, you take again this uh, linear weaker potential, potentials. Uh, it's just the same things, but uh, with the with the velocity of the. Retarded. Okay. So if you have this system, uh, uh, the P, right, uh, is just, uh, uh, let's, call, uh, let, let's call this uh, 
this, this distance r prime, so half of this distance is r prime half, and then you have uh, uh, the other half on the other. Then r prime e is the dipole moment. And r prime is all there is uh, in the volume, you know, the previous computation in which, uh, because this, I start, instead of expanding the general charge distribution, I just start with the leading term that is this dipole. Then uh, I have, uh, uh, and so I can uh, plug that in because you see that uh, I have E, the velocity of this uh, uh, is uh, uh, minus E R dot prime plus E R dot prime divided by two. So I guess uh, is, uh, uh, with a minus here. So it's minus E R uh, no, uh, equal uh, minus E R dot, that is P dot, P dot. Okay? So you can replace in here, uh, in there, this expression. And you see, you, you have, this is for a single charge, right? And the, you have to do it for two charges at the two different points. So this, this should be for the, so this is the general potential. And I have a potential for one charge in uh, plus r prime divided by two and the other uh, opposite and symmetrically uh, there. So I have to write this potential. So write this potential. So it's useful to introduce as uh, is done in, your, in the book, uh, uh, r minus plus this r prime divided by two. Because you see here, you have to put one charge in uh, plus r prime divided by two, the other charge in minus. So you may as well put one minus, this is the one in r minus r prime divided by two. So r minus, no. dot, uh, so v is r prime dot uh, divided by two. So it's like this. Retard. And then uh, you have the other charge, the one opposite, so it R plus, minus R plus, R plus. So here is in minus R prime, because it's the one in, in minus R prime, uh, divided by 2C. Uh, Okay, I don't write the, the same you should write for the, for, for the vector potential, you understand. Then, uh, uh, again, uh, so for the vector, maybe, and for the vector potential, so this was the scalar potential. The vector potential is just uh, what? Uh, you divide by C and you replace V with, uh, with R. Uh, dot prime divided by uh, two here and here divide by C and then minus R dot prime divided by two. Okay, so then this is the A. So let's, let's, let's use A as before. But you can do the same with the scalar potential. So now uh, uh, you, you have to do two assumptions. First, that the R plus minus, you see you are far away as before, you are in this uh, radiation zone. So you are sufficiently away from the, the system that essentially you can uh, approximate this by R, right? And the other thing is that I'm assuming that this thing moves, is oscillating, but not too fast. So you can sort of uh, neglect uh, relativistic effects. Uh, and therefore, you see, you can expand this and you get uh, that uh, uh, 
is about, so you see essentially you can check, let, let me write this result, is r dot prime, this is the velocity of your uh, divide by r, or you see you can use the definition of p is p dot cr at the retarded time. This is uh, the same result that we had before, essentially. Well, actually, precisely as it should. Now, if I if I take the uh, the curl of this, right, uh, you uh, get the uh, the field uh, and the same that we had before. If you take the um, yes. You can also, uh, well, th this was the homework in a way to rederive the, the result that we had from, so from the top down from, from the bottom up. So again, you see it goes like uh, uh, the velocity here when you take the field is going to go like uh, uh, the, the two dots, the two dots. So if you want... I rewrite, so if you take the curl of this, uh, you get uh, the p dot dot cross r, c r square, I think c square. And e is just the same thing, but you have to take the, so I put the cube here, but then you have cross r cross r. That I think is what I had before, I hope. And again, then uh, you can, uh, so you see it's the same things uh, re-derived from, from, uh, from just taking that term, not uh, by reducing the general expression. And if you do the pointing vector of this, then again you can compute the, uh, the, the radiation. And the total energy uh, and the, the law of the blue sky. So, okay, so that was uh, the homework, but I guess I, I did it for you. Notice that, uh, uh, notice that uh, uh, you remember that uh, the, the power emitted uh, uh, was like uh, the sine square of theta, right? I mean, if you have something like this, uh, you are here, uh, and this was theta. So that uh, maybe is worthwhile to notice that, uh, uh, so you don't have radiation emitted in the direction of the, of the motion, right? Because you see that the radiation is goes like the sine of the angle. So it's peaking, uh, I mean, it's zero, and then it's peaking uh, uh, orthogonally. That's a particular, uh, is a property of these, uh, uh, of these, uh, uh, of these, uh, um, of this kind of radiation, a, this is called synchrotron radiation when, when you have a single uh, electron. And uh, so it, it, it's zero in the direction of the motion. And then it, it, it's open up uh, and it reaches a maximum according to this uh, sine square, right? If you had included the, a more complicated system, like the quadrupole, you remember that we, we study the, the quadrupole uh, term of this, then uh, here you would have some corrections. Uh, that I guess, uh, so this I can always write it like this, right? So let me, one over C, uh, sorry, here we are. Uh, and uh, so R C square. So this is now I'm looking just at the radiation field. So the leading term is this uh, uh, P cross N. And just for reference, I put here that if you introduce, you remember this uh, Q that is the uh, quadrupole, no? this Q I J equals the integral 3 X I X J minus R square delta I J. Uh, the rho d3r. So if you introduce that, uh, 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 okay, it goes like this. Then you have higher term. Where this is the component of this uh, 
tensor projected on uh, on the on this uh, on two of these uh, of these uh, uh, unit vectors, and it goes like uh, uh, the triple derivative. I guess the first time that we see a triple derivative, because the acceleration is the is two dots, but this is three dots. And so you can. Uh, so let me give you uh, homework, and then I stop. So the homework uh, I thought uh, uh, is kind of interesting uh, is the so radiation of rotating. So it has to do with the atom in a way, rotating charge. So you take a, a charge moving on a circle of radius A. So that means uh, the function, the position of this uh, charge uh, is uh, uh, equal to the radius times, if you introduce some uh, Cartesian coordinates, so the, the unit vector in the direction x, let's, let's say it moves with the frequency omega naught. So it's moving like this, right? So it's in the class that we discussed uh, previously. And uh, therefore, it has a dipole moment that now I call D because that's uh, how it's written in, in the book, uh, like this. So now, by using this stuff, uh, you can compute H, E, and S, and uh, also the total, uh, total uh, radiant power, as I did before. In the, and the, 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 so you have to convince yourself that uh, in this case explicitly you reproduce this formula that I show you this uh, of the blue sky right that goes like the fourth power so I just uh, plug in in this solution the case of of the actually in the same uh, if you go to this uh, Grainer's book where this uh, example is discussed, you will see that uh, then he does the one with two charges moving uh, uh, in this way. And you see this is a system that has a quadrupole. So read the solution if you or do the computation if you want. And you will see that uh, this system already radiates much less than the single charge. So it's not true that, you know, you, you may expect that because you have two charges, you have mo even more radiation. But no, if they move in a particular way, like uh, completely out of phase, then they interfere with each other. And you will see, check that the power emitted in this second case is much smaller. In fact, uh, it goes like, uh, is the, the sixth power here divided by C to the fifth. So this is a, it's a small term. So it's much smaller than this. So you already reduce by very much the amount of radiation given off by this system just by adding a single charge. So you, you see, you can think of the atom as adding charges moving in a symmetric way, in such a way to reduce this uh, emitted power by many order of magnitude. 